Hello interwebs, it is I, David, sweatiest of all the Hewlett here with the Burn and Learn, and um, 65 minutes today, but uh, after three days off, that's kind of shameful. Ooh, check these out. Okay, so this is two sides of one gorgeous dinosaur. Um, this is uh, uh, this is from the Badlands of Alberta. This is actually a 3D print of a scan that the Steam Sisters somehow managed to convince um, a, uh, I guess, a dinosaur museum or dinosaur facility, a paleontologist perhaps. Somebody of key importance has given them a very detailed scan of this rather rare dinosaur that they're going to talk to you all about in their Steam Sisters videos. I've been helping them out with that. I did the 3D print. I want them to see, though, um, or their, at least their audiences, to see how the 3D printing works. Um, with little brims and, and supports and just, just, oh, it's just, it's the coolest process. And it's also the coolest community because I was, man, I was struggling to get that done. Kept on coming off the, off the board. Um, and I got, I, I reached out for help on Twitter and this amazing 3D printing community just rushed to my aid, um, including Prusa himself. I mean, the guy who literally engineered this whole, created this whole 3D printer setup that I have here. Um, he's got much more cool advanced ones now, but but that was the that was the kit that I built that got me started on this stuff. Um, it is still printing these gorgeous, like gorgeously detailed pieces. Um, I just needed some help in making it in making it happen this time. So. Um, Really, really looking forward to doing that. Um, we're going to be talking about that tomorrow. You'll be seeing that video. I'm not sure whenever they put it up. Um, and uh, I've also been doing some learning with my Burn and Learns. I should say, this is a Burn and Learn. This is my bit to stay alive and fit long enough to raise my amazing son, currently in exams, uh, and to enjoy the coming twilight years of my brilliant, beautiful wife, Jane. I hate exercise. It's boring, so I like to learn something while I'm doing it. I like to share what I've learned with you in the sweatiest, most miserable, grumpiest, guilt-ridden way, guilt-ridden? Guilt-ridden way possible. Boy, it was guilt-ridden today. Three days off. I somehow, the weekends are screwing me up. So I think I'm gonna ditch the weekends and I'm just gonna just, I just, I have to do a burn and learn every other day. It's the only way to do it because as soon as I lose that, I get, I lose that momentum with those two days off and then it's like, you know, two days turns into three days, turns into an extra large pizza with double cheese and the cheese and the crust, which is delicious. And it's just not good for the whole, you know, fitness thing. So, um, <laughs> fitness, I don't, that's right. I don't refer to this as fitness. So I refer to this as just staying alive by keeping my body in somewhat, you know, usable form. Um, and uh, yes, so to ignore the whole exercise part of it, I you focus on the learn. The learn made me just rocket through 65 minutes of uh, torture device today. Uh, I've gone from Arduino to, our, you know, Arduino programming, Arduino building, um, the mechanics of that into C programming. Um, and now I'm into C programming for embedded controllers. So little micro, uh, and what do they call them? Uh, MCUs, uh, micro control units, um, Arduinos, uh, all that kind of stuff. Stuff that I've just been oh, dying to play with. Um, but of course the problem is, very small, very underpowered, uh, both from a from a power standpoint and also from a processing standpoint, memory standpoint. So you got to be really careful. So you get into all this really cool stuff. Like um, today we're looking at um, LUTs, L-U-T, uh, L -U -T, look up tables. Um, and these things, I've only heard of them in the film industry where they use them for, um, they use these lookup tables to, to um, uh, configure the look of a digital camera, basically. So when it comes out of the camera, it's very sort of bland, and then you add a lookup table, and that sort of makes things pop as you see fit type thing. So it's kind of like a, it's almost like color grading. Well, it is basically color grading for for um, uh, for, for cameras, uh, for digital cameras, uh, and it's just there's a whole art to that unto itself. Anyways, but it makes sense. I never thought of it as a as a as a as a computing term, but of course it is. Um, and the idea is, how do you speed things up? Um, you know, if a, if a computer has to work out every little detail uh, every time, it's, 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 it's working its little heart out. So um, by giving it a lookup table, it just has to look up the answer. It's kind of like us memorizing our multiplication tables, right? Um, instead of having to do all the processing every time, you just memorize it. So you just go to your memory, pull it out, and well, depending on your memory, mine may be a little corrupted. Um, you know, you get, you get your multiplication tables much, much faster than having to work it out every time. And so that's very basic level, what the lookup tables are doing. The idea of having all of the answers to potentially quite complex um, uh, equations just there in a table that friends will look up. Very, very quick, much, much faster than doing all the processing required, especially on these little tiny underpowered uh, MCUs like the Arduino, that kind of stuff. They don't even have floating point um, uh, uh, sec uh, what are the sections, uh, the chips. They don't even, like, so the, the, it all has to be done basically by the CPU, whereas most 
of the more advanced ones have their own floating point things that do all that math for them. So anyways, just amazing how you're sort of getting around the limitations of these things. Then we're dealing with um, uh, bit masking. So the idea of instead of having to use up an entire... Um, you know, a large amount of space or memory for a variable, you take a little tiny variable and then you just change bits within it. So, um, so you could just say on or off, you know, do you want, uh, you know, is the, uh, are we sending or receiving? Uh, is the LED on or off? And of course that takes up such a tiny amount of memory. It all adds up. You can have quite complex programs by just using, like taking one byte of data, like eight little bits, and then just manipulating those bits uh, using these masks. And it's just, oh, it's really cool. But in the debugging section where they were like showing you how um, how the uh, the compiler optimizes this code, right? So it goes through it. It goes like, do you really need that? Or can we change that? Or how it can really mess with the code. Um, but it, it showed me just all the little assembler uh, code required for each thing, like three or four lines of code for each one line of this C programming code. And I, I just got that sort of, oh, I want to get, I want to get further into the guts. It's like everything you learn, there's always something else to get into. And it's just this wonderful sort of um, rabbit hole that you go down with uh, with learning and uh, and uh, of course, programming is no is no different. Uh, so C programming right now, uh, maybe assembler next. Who knows? Uh, but I really want this stuff to be. Um, I just wanted to get a nice overall view of micro um, controllers like the Arduino and stuff because a lot of that stuff gets used in um, in Steam and STEM. Uh, related stuff. And I really wanted to be, I want to be the go-to guy for that stuff. So I'm uh, really, really enjoying that. I uh, had a wonderful meeting with a fellow Steam fan from Thunder Bay this weekend. Um, she's doing some amazing stuff with the Makerspace up there. Um, it was just great to sit down and 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 uh, uh, sort of bash some ideas back and forth. And she's she's been very very kind about um, uh, coming up with some suggestions for these uh, robotic arms because a, a lot of them broke the last time we used them. So we were talking about how maybe we could make something sort of modular or something that the kids can build themselves. Like what could we do? It's just oh, it's great. It's just it's so it's so much fun to sit down with kindred spirits and talk about this stuff. And I I so appreciate her coming in. And, uh, and taking some time to uh, to chat with him about that. So um, so that was my weekend. Uh, we've got exams this week. Baz is in exams, a little terrifying. He has a science exam on Friday. He complained was boring. So that certainly got my attention. I started going through his book, and sure enough, he's dealing with all this kind of dull stuff about molecules and atoms and, um, you know, and uh, God, what is he doing? Thermodynamics, stuff that is actually really exciting unless you're reading it on a page. Now. I imagine they've probably done more practical stuff in the class, but but I thought, well, how can I make this come alive for him more? And I thought, oh, I got to get some dry ice, dry ice or liquid nitrogen, something so we can really sort of like hammer home some of these ideas. Um, I remember that really sticking in my mind. Like sublimation. It makes sense to me simply because of dry ice. Um, this is something else I was talking about with uh, with my Thunder Bay companion. Um, so uh, yeah, just a, just a, I'm looking now for, I don't know how to get small amounts of dry ice in Toronto or how to get uh, a big thing of liquid nitrogen to play with. Uh, God, my wife would be terrified of that, but it would be so much fun to have. Uh, anyways, so um, I wish I had talked to my dad about this earlier because he was, as a as a doctor, he was dealing with a lot of uh, of dry ice and stuff. He had all the containers and everything. God, you should have got them before he retired. Anyways, um, so there you go. That's the scoop. Tomorrow, working with the Steam Sisters again. Um, we're going to be doing some, some fun stuff. Very messy as always. Um, I think there may be some pizza involved. We'll see. I always love pizza. Any excuse for pizza. Um, hoping to bring Q in on this. My friend Q who does Cooking with Q, which you should check out for sure on Instagram. Doing amazing stuff there. He basically invents recipes. use crazy invented recipes. And and, uh, um, and I don't know how he comes up with this stuff or how he continues to pro like put out so much really cool stuff. But anyways, that's it. Um, so I better go. Uh, day to get on with. You know, things to do. So until we geek again, sweaty or not, here I come. Or there I go. Cheerio! <laughs>